Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, kind uh, words and uh, welcome uh, invitation for uh, coming to speak here. Uh, so when I heard data blitz, uh, in my mind, I translated that to um, how have we prepped the landscape to collect big data. So I'm not going to blitz you with any data really today, but instead I'm going to tell you about a platform, and some, uh, one of the platforms that we've started to build to collect data. Uh, and I, I like the way uh, Ian really put it in the previous talk of how really the next stage is we've shown feasibility, how do we scale that up? Uh, and specifically, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the Aurora study, which is a public-private partnership where we're involved as a private company, as Verily, in this uh, NIMH-funded study of post-trauma. So what is Verily, just to clear that up, or make that uh, clear, is Verily is the life sciences division of Alphabet. Uh, so Verily effectively is a sister company of uh, Google. Both of those are subsidiaries of Alphabet. We work closely with Alphabet um, companies, including Google. So in one of the things that I really wanted to talk about today was uh, our study watch, the Verily study watch. And, all. and when thinking about how to design a watch for clinical studies, uh, we realized that there were some distinct requirements for wearables. One is that one of them is that we'd like to collect very rich and complex data sets of varying uh, data types, uh, also provide an engaging user experience, which is something we talked about, so that people actually want to uh, uh, consent and continuously uh, allow for data collection for those studies. And we also want that to scale. So we want the capacity to uh, have a platform that allows us to ingest and manage data for hundreds or thousands of devices. And I'll talk about that in the Aurora study. So we came up, with, like I said, with this Verily study watch. Um, we want it to be a wrist-worn device, uh, a combination of some physiological sensors and environmental sensors. And I'll go into some detail on some of those. Um, let me go. I'll jump right in. So in terms of the design, we wanted it to be a watch because we really thought that it would uh, have a broad appeal uh, between uh, sort of the younger generation that is into wearables and into uh, quantified self versus uh, some of the older generation that might uh, appeal to them a, a more standard watch and a watch look. Sorry. Um, one of the other things that we added in is having a very sim simple tactile user interface. So there are actual buttons on the side of the watch uh, that allow you to mark certain tasks, uh, like taking an ECG measurement or knowing the ECG is done and just having like the watch face, uh, being able to set the watch with using the buttons as well. So now what, what are we actually measuring the watch? What, why is this useful for clinical studies? So we developed a number of sensors, including optical, electrical, uh, movement, and environmental sensors. So uh, one example of the optic or one the optical sensor that we have is the PPG, the photoplethysmogram, which allows you to measure optically at the wrist uh, pulse rate in a continuous uh, manner, and also look at uh, sleep quality metrics and other metrics. Uh, in particular, the pulse rate is the one that we're most interested in for the Aurora study of post-trauma, and I'll mention about that shortly. That's just an example of some of the data. So I guess technically I do have a little bit of data in the talk. Uh, we have some raw PPG from uh, one subject. Uh, one of the sensors we also had is our, our electrical signal, so in this case, uh, electrocardiogram, and this is an active uh, sensor, so someone can uh, take uh, an electrocardiogram uh, over the course of one minute. They have to hold uh, and touch the sensors on the, side of their, on, on the phone to have a uh, difference in the electric field between the left side and the right side of their body, and what it allows you to do is measure the heart rate um, e even more uh, sort of traditionally in the ECG setting uh, on-demand heart rate and it could be used for cardiovascular um, uh, disease as well in terms of arrhythmia. Uh, another electrical sensor that we have is this EDA, the electrodermal activity, which lets you measure things like galvanic skin response and that's something that we're interested in, in particular in general, the sympathetic nervous system activity, which is again useful when we're thinking about uh, post-trauma um, measure, measurement potentially measuring things like nightmares or flashbacks and, and how that's um, uh, physiologically uh, measurable. Uh, another sensor that we're interested in is the uh, accelerometer or uh, gyroscope sensor to measure rotational movements uh, and overall movement where we can measure things like gait and movement disorders. In particular, uh, 
the thing that we're most interested in in the Aurora study, and again, the details of, of that are is activity tracking, where you can look at uh, measuring sleep patterns over time and physical activity. So what does uh, the study watch overall look like? You have the watch and you have uh, the data hub, the study hub, uh, where you can charge it regularly. So one of the advantages that uh, we built into the study watch, and yeah, I don't think I have it in the slide here, um, is that we're actually collecting all of the raw data. So that way um, we're able to process the data later because really I think the name of the game here in really making uh, tra clinically translatable uh, differences is being able to um, have large scale data sets and since things are going to change over time, if we don't process the uh, features on the watch and instead collect all the raw data and on the back end, uh, both our, we uh, and part of uh, larger studies like Aurora and eventually data becomes public, that allows you re researchers to access the raw data, come up with new algorithms and new predictors uh, based on that raw data. So uh, what is this Aurora study that I've been mentioning? Uh, so the background is that uh, after trauma, let's say one in five people, and that's pretty rough and depending on which type of trauma, will develop PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder within a year of traumatic exposure. And, and the basic hypothesis is uh, that wearable, specifically study watch and phone sensors from an app from MindStrong, from Tom Insel's company, and other biological data, and I'll get into some of the details of that data in a second, uh, could perhaps lead to a model that predicts the onset of adverse outcomes, including PTSD. And this is a, a 5,000 person longitudinal study. Uh, it's really the largest pr prospective cohort study of trauma survivors ever performed, and this is an NIH and IMH funded study, as I said, of 5,000 trauma victims, over 10 ER recruitment sites throughout the U.S., and this is a study that's led by uh, Sam McLean at University of North Carolina, but also uh, a bunch of Boston-based groups, including uh, Ron Kessler and Kerry Ressler, who's here, and Karsten Conan from Harvard as well. And there are uh, many other parties involved in this large collaboration, and I'm not going to list them. Some, some of them are in this room, uh, and again, also two companies, both Verily, uh, which is providing the uh, study watch for this study, and MindStrong, which, which is providing the app for the study. So, in terms of the way uh, the study is, is sort of framed and set up is to do this longitudinal assessment of post-traumatic uh, syndromes. And if in a traditional worldview of post-trauma, you can look at PTSD or depression or minor traumatic brain injury, et cetera, um, really what this study allows is to look at the RDOC, the, which was talked about before uh, earlier this morning, um, and being able to measure things like fear, threat, loss, and some of those we'll be able to look at uh, using combinations of genetics and brain imaging uh, and study watch and the app uh, for MindStrong as well. And again, it's going to be 5,000 people longitudinally followed for a year. All the different data types uh, are, are listed here. So we start with a medical record from uh, admission at the ER uh, post-trauma. Um, then there'll be self-reported surveys done on a regular basis on, on the phone app. Um, there'll also be continuous passive data from the watch, which is what I was talking about from the Verily perspective, but also from uh, the MindStrong app, and we've heard a lot of, um, um, about the B-Way app, and it has some similarities, but also some other differences. I'm sure Tom will talk about that tomorrow. Um, there are neurocognitive ass uh, cognitive assessments performed online. There are biological data, uh, biologics data, uh, that will be generated from biologic samples, biological samples of RNA and DNA, from blood and plasma and saliva. Uh, for certain uh, subsets of the cohort, there will also be deeper phenotyping using brain imaging of different uh, flavors and also in lab uh, neurophysiological measures of uh, certain startle responses and pain testing and heart rate and uh, some other technologies as well. So just, again, this is a data blitz talk, so I thought I should show some data. This is really just so far, roughly, uh, last I counted, roughly 20 patients or so are enrolled out of the 5,000, so the study's really just getting started. It launched this summer. Uh, so this is just some time series uh, data from the Verily Study Watch, really just raw data of the PPG, the pulse rate uh, input, and the EDA for electrical con conductivity, and the accelerometer and the X, Y, and Z axes. So just to say that the data started to flow in, um, but really, I view this as, as a really uh, potential potentially groundbreaking study in that it's trying to go uh, really big and multimodal, look at various data types, 
lots of different outcomes and, and try to see how those actually play out in practice in, in a large number of people. That's really uh, it in terms of the Datablitz talk and there's some links here to uh, the Verily blog about this uh, and our, 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 our uh, an article that uh, they wrote up about uh, this study in Wired magazine. Actually, thank you.